Wow. Um, if you want to open up a can of worms, uh, if you want to bring some harsh words your way, uh, talk about how Christmas is not Christian. Uh, talk about the pagan origins. Talking about that God's ways and the ways of the world are, yeah, two totally different things. Um, in the short amount of time that I've posted this video, I've gotten some people that have said, wow, that's some great information. I've got some that have said, you know, uh, that's interesting. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to, to, to look at God's word and be like a brand to see if what you're saying is true. Then there's other people that are ridiculing, um, I'm, you know, people being real sarcastic. And, and it's, you know what, I didn't come to you uh, in, a, in a sarcastic manner, in a ridiculing tone. I didn't come to you to say you're going to hell because you got a Christmas tree in your house or because you're giving gifts to your kids on this day. I want to make perfectly clear that if we are to walk in God in his ways, in his principles, his statutes, his ordinances, and that those things, that if we're obedient, that that brings blessing upon our life, just as if we're obedient and we don't commit adultery, then the liberty that we have is that we're not caught up in that sexual sin. We don't have that sexually transmitted disease. Uh, we don't have caused that, that division and divorce within the family. We don't, uh, the frustration, the depression, the anger, uh, the fighting, the bickering, all that stuff is, is left to the wayside because we don't engage in that sin. So that is our, we're free from the slavery of that particular sin. So those are sins of, of do not do these things, thou shalt not. And then there's, there's things that sins of omission, things that we do not do that we should. And Paul talks about these things in the New Testament, that there's things that, that I know I should be doing, but I don't. But, I, I, you know, it's going back and forth. Woe to me, you know, the double-minded man and, and all that. Um, but we know that our heart is deceitfully wicked, and the truth that we see is in God's Word. It's not what I think. It's not what you think. It's not what the pastor down the street. It's what scripture states as being truth. And from what I've seen and the people I've talked to and pastors and seminary students and professors in the whole nine yards, evangelists, that are we supposed to conform our lives in the image of him? Yes, of course. That is always the answer. Uh, are we to live a life that is pleasing to God? Yes, that is always the answer. Are we supposed to do God's good works? And yes, the answer is yes. If we love God, are we to keep his commandments? Yes, we see that in, in 1 John. So all these answers are yes, but then when it gets to the point of like, okay, well, um, this Christmas thing, with all the pagan origins and the things, should we perhaps look at this like a Berean and see if there needs to be some adjustment in how we live in this world? Are we supposed to do the things that the world does and, you know, put a little plastic Jesus sticker on it and say, I'm good to go? Or rather, are we supposed to cast off the things of the world and do the things that God tells us to do? To walk in that liberty, that, that free from slavery of sin. That's a resounding yes. But when you bring up things like this, the Christmas deal... Uh, in the origins, people get, they ridicule you. They get real sarcastic. And, and it's like, uh, that's not supposed to be the case. Instead of ridiculing and being sarcastic, why not take the time and say, hey, you know what? Um, I need to look at that. As crazy as this seems, the ultimate test is to test everything. Again, Scripture, that's what Scripture says. Test everything. Test the spirits. Test the message. Test the fruit. Test the word. And if somebody says, this is what we're supposed to be doing or not doing, and these are the scriptures that, that support this, isn't it your responsibility to test what is being said, to be that mature Christian, to see if what is being said is true? Of course. So I'm not asking anybody to take their Christmas tree out of their house right now and all the gifts and put it in their front yard, pour gasoline on it and, and light it on fires. Their kids are screaming and, the, you know, the fire truck's coming and neighbors are like, what the hell's going on? And, and I'm not asking for that. What I'm asking is to search the scriptures. To ask God in prayer, Lord, open up your truth, your wisdom to me through your word. It's got to be in context. 
It can't be that out of out of context stuff that well, I'll pick some from here and some from here and I'm gonna run with that. No, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So with that, that's what I'm asking. Search the scriptures to see if this is true. Look at God's ways, look at the ways of the world, look at the history and the origins. Don't be sarcastic, don't ridicule, don't say that I'm not a believer and that I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the, the comment to say I'm racist, because usually when you bring up controversial stuff of truth, uh, somebody who doesn't like the truth or is presented with the truth and it and it hurts to be convicted and to be hit with the truth of God and his word, you'll get a lot of, of different types of, of remarks and replies. And and I'm waiting for the racist one. Yo, you're just a racist. Um I'm married to a Korean, okay? That doesn't work. <laughs> I didn't even say the word race in the entire video. But, so let's get back to God and his word. I had another individual who uh, was not sarcastic who sent me a message, a uh, private message, and said, hey, you know, um, you know, I'm not going to get rid of my Christmas tree. I'm not going to get rid of this. And I'm not telling you that you should. Should you stop doing that? That's between you and God. But the question is, are we going to conform our, our lives in the image of him who saved us? And the question is, if he is our example, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, Yeshua. If that is the case, what did Yeshua do in his life here on earth? Did it warrant following pagan things? Did he ever take a pagan holiday and uh, wrap it up and spin it around and say, bing, here's a new Christian holiday. We're going to Christianize this old pagan holiday. No, we don't. Rather, what we see is God's ways are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I challenge you again. I challenge everybody to look at Scripture, to do a word search for eternal, forever, forever, for generations, perpetual covenant, enduring, everlasting covenant, and look at those things and study those things. Because... Perhaps, just perhaps, that we're supposed to be strangers in a strange land. And then when we withdraw from the pagan practices of the world, no matter how much we tried to slap a Jesus sticker over it, maybe that will get us in a place where we'll have more face time with God and his word. And we'll develop that relationship a little bit deeper than we did before. before. Maybe we'll get off the milk start working towards the meat and potatoes and doing God's good works. We'll know the truth and we'll do the truth. We'll live the truth in our lives. We'll be that light to the world. What does light have in common with darkness? There's so many scriptures that just pop up and it's like, wow. To the person that said, you know, well, I'm not going to get rid of my Christmas tree. I, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not asking you. What I'm asking you is to research look and search the scriptures to see what is being said and is it true to test everything. The question is not, should I stop doing Christmas? The question is, here's Christmas. Now, look at these things that God said that would be forever and eternal, even in the new heaven and the new earth. Am I doing those things? Am I practicing those things in my life today? Maybe I need to add the Feast of the Lord and look at celebrating those, those things that he said would be forever. Again, Deuteronomy states that the law, the Torah, the instructions for life, the word law is a, isn't a correct translation. Uh, it is better described as instructions for life so that we, the Israelites and us, see the same, same Torah, the same instructions apply for the Jew and the Gentile. There's going to be one flock. Jew first and then the Gentile. Yeshua even talked about that in the New Testament. Maybe we should start incorporating and looking at some of these things. But to say that, that Jesus was born on December 25th? That's a lie. So why would you try to engage the world? Why would you try to evangelize and, and say, you know, yeah, he was born on December 25th. And it, it's kind of like telling your, your children, and I mentioned this to somebody, uh, in a reply that I wrote, that, you know, we teach our children about Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny, uh, and some other things, uh, cultural things that, that aren't true. And yet our children are disheartened that us, the parents, have lied to their children 
to believe in these imaginary things and they're heartbroken because we're supposed to raise up our child in the way they should go. We shouldn't lie to them. Should we? I don't think so. But yet we'll teach our children all these things and then, then they find out that there is no Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, or Tooth Fairy, but then we'll turn right around and say, now it's time to believe in God. Now I'm really serious. So that other stuff I was just joking around, but now it's time to believe in God. You can't see him, hear him. None of those things, kind of like those, but now you've got to believe in God. We're setting our children up for failure. So am I saying take the tree out and all the gifts, soak it in gas and have a big old bonfire for God? No. Might be kind of cool, but no. What I'm saying is look at Scripture and see what does Christmas have to do. It's really interesting because what does Christmas, the birth of Yeshua, which the Jews in their culture didn't celebrate the birth of anybody, but the passing why are we doing the opposite? That's a good question. Maybe we need to question that what we've been taught and get back to God's Word and indeed test everything. Maybe we should look at Passover. Maybe we should look at Sukkot and the first fruits. You know, what's really wild is that you'll see when Yeshua died and then when he rose again, that was the waving of the first fruits, the wave offering. Get goosebumps. I mean, there, there is so much in the feast of God, and it's no wonder that he says to do these things, because it applies to times past, present, and still yet future. I'm just saying, search the scriptures. Don't make any rash judgments or take any rash actions. Be like a brilliant. Be wise. Search those scriptures and say, you know what? As crazy as this seems, I'm going to look. I'm going to look at where it says forever and everlasting and, and without end for your generations. In other words, it's perpetual. As long as, as there is God and he has people who follow him, it is for your generations. I'm going to look at those things. I'm going to look at those feasts. I'm going to look at those, those practices, the ways of the world versus the ways of God and say, okay, what am I supposed to do? Then, and during this time, ask for God's wisdom, ask for him to open up your eyes to the truth, and then to bring you into a place of maturity. And it might not be this time. God deals with people on different ways and, and different times. For some people, it's like, you know, the drug users and people that smoke there, some people, uh, the alcoholics and the whole nine yards and, you know, smoking up weed and stuff. You know, they become a believer, boom, it's gone. It's a done deal because they've been made that new creation. For others, it, it might take some time because God is dealing with something else in their lives. So understand that this might not be the time where you're going to openly accept this truth. But don't totally disregard it, especially if you cannot find any scriptures to disprove this. Okay? Been there, done that. <laughs> had, had to eat crow many, many times, and I'm sure I, I still will. But the times that I've had to eat crow, and I have put my foot on my mouth, and the things that I've done wrong, and walked in error, and not in God's ways, is because I relied on me in here. I didn't rely on God's word. Test everything. That's why the scripture's there. Test everything. The spirits and message of fruit. Um, and, and be mature, be civil. That's all I'm asking for. Look at this. Don't tell me I'm racist. Don't tell me I'm stupid or I'm not a believer or whatever, you know, whatever the, the favorite ad hominem, ad, hominem, ad hominem insult is today, the assault on me or my family. There's big boy and big girl rules. Big boy rules. So, say, okay, hmm, it's kind of different. I'm going to test it against Scripture and we'll see. Now, don't test it against what your pastor has said. You do the research. You be the subject matter, matter expert on God's Word. See if it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
I challenge you to do that for yourself and your family. Don't just regurgitate what uh, some seminary guy or Bible college student who suddenly became a pastor. Really? Four years of Bible college? That somehow that makes you a mature man of God and suddenly... Uh, you, you, no. That's not the way it is in Scripture. Now, am I saying to discount Bible college? No, I'm not. But that in and of itself does not make one wise in the Lord. It does not make that person an elder or a deacon or a leader in the church. The New Testament shows that those, they came and they found those who were mature, that had walked in the Lord, been through trials and tribulation, that had fruit in their lives that showed that they not only knew God's word, they walked with God in his ways, and they were able to overcome sin and temptation. And it all went back to Scripture, because that is our foundation. So, all I'm asking is, in this time, look at these different things. See, in my life, am I doing these things because the world says it, or because Scripture says it? And so many people are like, well, I'm not going to give up Christmas, really? I'm not going to do those things. And, you know, Christmas is Christian. Really? Okay. That's all I can say. <laughs> There it is, but <laughs> but please take the time to look at it, and don't ridicule me for the way that I walk out my walk with God. If there's something that I'm doing wrong, show me where it says do not participate in the feast of the Lord. Show me any scripture where it says do not that forever has stopped, and now there's a pause, and, and I'm not supposed to do that stuff anymore. I I haven't found it yet. So if you find it, please, 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 please let me know. Because I don't want to walk in the ways of the world and not in God's ways. So I want that correction. I want that training in righteousness. I want that rebuke to keep me on the narrow path. And that should be that should be all our, our in our hearts. Easy to say, hard to do, but but I do look for that correction. I look for that training in righteousness. Because I need it. <laughs> I need as much help as I can get from God and His Word. So, I guess that's it. Um, leave the snide and rude killing remarks. Leave the sarcasm. Leave the uh, whatever it is. And if you disagree, just say, hey, you know, I'll take a look at it. I don't disagree. But then again, I challenge you, disprove what, what I have said. Disprove what it says in Scripture. Disprove the ways of the world and the ways of God and how we're supposed to blend and mix. I, you show me in context scriptures that that is 100% is acceptable to God and that's not an abomination to him. Bring it, please. I would really love it. But the thing is, walking in liberty and walking in this freedom and walking in God's ways brings about blessing. I'm not doing it because I get blessed. But there's, when you walk with God and you're observant and you're obedient to him and his Torah, his words, his instructions for life, there are no obstacles between you and God or there's less obstacles between you and God as you're growing in the faith, going from glory to glory, that that relationship becomes deeper. I think people would agree on that. So... Something to think about. So anyway, uh, enjoy your holidays. Uh, keep God first in your life. That's all I ask. That's all I really ask. That's all I ask of myself. And I ask that you would pray for me and my family as we walk with God and continue down this road. Um, and I will do the same for you out there. But don't ridicule or, or be sarcastic or, or demean anybody or attack somebody because they walk their faith out in a way that's different than you. Instead, why don't you take it and test it against Scripture? And then if you get to the point where you say, you know, hey, I'm not convicted of this heart in my, in my heart. Uh, I really don't see it in Scripture. Um, then that's fine. That is not a reason for disfellowship. However, if you can't disprove it, and forever really does mean forever. You might, you might want to step back and regroup. But uh, 
And I know how that goes a lot of times, too. So anyway, that's it. Take care. God bless. Happy holidays. And uh, we'll see you on a future video. Bye.